<laughs> Hi everyone, Bethany Koftano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Haru Nomuri record, Shunka Ryogen. This is the sophomore full-length LP of Japanese rapper, singer, songwriter, Miss Haru Nomuri. I first stumbled across her work in 2018 when I was hearing tracks and teasers from her fantastic debut, Haru Toshura, a record I enjoyed for many reasons, but mostly for its catchy hooks, its impassioned vocals, the novel ways in which Haru combined elements of noise rock and J-pop and hip-hop, even art rock and post-hardcore. It has been a long four years waiting for the follow-up, though in 2020 we did get that awesome Love Theism EP, which showed Haru upping her instrumental ambitions with more arranged and layered instrumentation, and it would seem the name of the game on this new LP over here is to find even more ways to diversify her sound. Doing so over the course of 21 tracks that span over an hour in length, and along the progression of this project, there are a lot of interesting and novel highlights, but simultaneously this thing does make me miss some aspects of the debut. Like, for as varied as that album was, it was still a pretty focused listen overall. Conversely, Shunka Ryogen feels so much more unwieldy, and maybe even longer than the actual hour that it lasts. Still, I would say this record overall is a gratifying one and shows Haru advancing artistically in some pockets, but when a pothole does kind of get thrown into the track list here and there, it's a deep one. Like with the track Old Fashioned, whose gated drums and roaring 80s hard rock style guitars make a very dysfunctional marriage with some trap style snares and hi-hats. Not to mention this regal piano intro tries to force this cute contrast right at the start of the track. The very tangy auto-tune runs that hit on the chorus as well are quite grating. So we go from moments on the record that are tacky to cluttered, like the track Sozu Suru, whose squeaky lead melodies, heavy drums, booming sound effects, all sound like something that could have potentially been lifted from some Bjork-ish art pop meditation, but also show that just because everything is functioning on the same tempo in a given track does not necessarily necessarily mean that it's all working together, as the various melodic and rhythmic fragments that make up the song uh, don't really pile on top of each other to create anything all that compelling or stand out. The song Heart of Gold I'm a little disappointed with on the production end too, the guitar tone and limp beats as well as the rattling hi-hats all feel kind of demo quality in comparison with some of the other instrumentals here, even if there is a consciously lo-fi aesthetic being pursued on this one. Meanwhile, Who the Fuck is Burning the Forest does bring one of the strong choruses on this entire record, but simultaneously it delivers the kind of moody, downtrodden, driving, gothy, punky guitar riffs that you might catch out of a, a very depressive Machine Gun Kelly song, or anything else along those lines. So the experimentation on this LP is a little hit or miss, but still obviously well-intentioned, and occasionally it does come out with uh, some gratifying results, like on the track Sister with Sisters. On the instrumental side, again, we have a lot of trap influences with huge booming bass hits, meditative rhythms, lightly auto-tuned lead vocals. Yeah, compositionally the track does come off a little bit hectic, but this trap art pop combo does go over better than expected, and also includes some kind of dark progressive sections that remind me a bit of Yeezus too. You know, for the most part, in this very dense track list, I mostly end up preferring the songs that just feel like elevated versions of tracks that could have landed on the last record. Whether that be the song Bang, which in my opinion has a very classic Haru Toshira formula, the angular guitars, tight drums, Haru's incredibly fast and dense verses, just rapping and speaking at rapid fire, it continues to be a winning combination, but now feels a bit louder and larger this time around, complete with anthemic synthesizers and chanted group vocals that uh, hit you with these shots of Bang Bang! The song Shunrai too, which is also packed with these really melodic, exhilarating post-hardcore guitars, chanted choruses too. We even get a deconstructed version of the early single Kick in the World, which I guess isn't as thick and as blissful as the original version, but more enraged instead. Haru's bright vocal layers on that original version kind of get swapped out for these deep, bellowing, just mind-blowing screams. In the grander scheme of things, am I crazy about this song being recycled
handled in this way, not necessarily, but the performance is so good, it, it's kind of hard not to share, I would imagine. And on top of it, with a track list this eclectic, uh, why not throw it in there? I'm also pretty impressed with the multi-phased rock epic on the track Never Let You Go, which sounds to me like Haru is once again employing those dynamic and epic touches of vocals and instrumentation that made so many cuts off Love Theism so good. Plus, there's a really adventurous bridge that kind of breaks away from the overall structure of the track pretty expansively into these math rock riffs and wintry group vocals, eventually bringing it all back for an epic finale. I would say overall the record has a pretty strong ending too, with again kicking the world. The song Inori Dake Ga Aru features this amazing, patient, beautiful build, but eventually unleashes into this immense noise rock crescendo. Easily the biggest sounding track on the entire record. The song really feels like the world just crumbling down around me, and in the lyrics there is this sense of kind of working through this this long pent up rage, and you certainly feel it. With this track being as heavy and as dark and as immense as it is, uh, the following Ikiru, which was the final single of the record, feels like a credits roll type of moment for the album. The persistent beats and uplifting group vocals on the track also leave things on a positive note, especially considering the lyrics on this one are all about uh, celebrating the beauty of life, even in the face of a dying or a failing world. There's something kind of beautiful about maintaining that mindset uh, with such dire circumstances in front of you. But yeah, I think overall this is a very good album from Haru. Are there some tracks I didn't care for? Could I take or leave all the interludes? Uh, sure. Yes, there were also some times where I feel like the size of the project or the size of Haru's stylistic or aesthetic ambitions did get away from her a little bit, but there are still a ton of highlights on this record, a ton of great moments. And with this LP, I think she continues to be one of the most exciting acts musically to cross over internationally from Japan over the past few years. I'm feeling a light to decent seven on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Haru Nomuri, uh, forever.